Good morning, mathematicians. This is Monday, week 30, and we are starting off with this tape diagram. So in this question, we have Katniss Everclean, and he has five, or excuse me, seven pounds of fur. So this entire rectangle represents seven pounds. Now, after he weekly fur cut, after the weekly fur cut, she has five and two thirds of fur left. So we want to know how much was cut off. Notice, boys and girls, this is how much is left. This is how much was cut off. We're trying to figure out this number and it is going to all equal seven. We'll just leave it right there, that'd be great. We are looking for this missing part. So the first thing that we want to do is see if we have two thirds, we want to know what fraction with a denominator of three would equal one whole. Well, I know that two thirds plus one third is going to equal three thirds. So this fraction and this fraction is going to equal one. Now, if I have one whole because of those two fractions and five, I've already used up six of the pounds. So I need one more. And in this way, I know that five and two thirds plus one and one third equals seven. Boys and girls, our answer to this question is one and one third pound. We want to go back and refer to the question and find that that one third means the pounds that was cut off, okay? Our next question says, Al dente filled four thirds of his one liter marinara container. Did he fill more or less than one liter? So really what we're asked here is like a comparison. Is four thirds greater than one, less than one, or equal to one? We know it's not equal to one because three thirds would be equal to one. This numerator is four, so therefore I know this is greater than one whole. Now we are asked to explain, so we are going to say that he filled more than one liter because, just like we said, four thirds, and I'm going to use my comparison symbol, is greater than one. So really, he has an extra one third of a liter, okay? Now our next question says a kilo is two thirds of point B. So the first thing we need to do is mark where point B is. Well, if this is two thirds, then this might be one third. If we had one third, two third, this would be three third, right? So here, boys and girls, is where point B should be. It's going to be just a third away. Here's a third, here's a third. That's how I know where to put point B. Now, the next thing we're told is that point C is one half of point A, right? So if I have zero here, if I have technically like one here at A, we are going to put this as C, it's going to be right in the middle between zero and A. That's all we have to do for that is we're really just thinking about like a number line and marking where those fractions would be. This says solve the following and simplify the fractions if possible. Notice, boys and girls, first of all, I have two whole numbers because I have a mixed number. I have a whole number part and a fraction part. So I know that, for example, here I have five minus three. So I know that is going to give me a big two because my whole number value will be two. Now I look at these fractions and I notice that they already have common denominators. Since they have common denominators, I can simply put my denominator here in my answer as well. My denominator is eight. And now I'm going to subtract my numerators. I have seven minus five is two. So my answer here is two and two eighths. Now I know that two and eight are both even numbers, which means that they share the factor of two. So I really can make two eighths equal to one fourth because that is like dividing out the two. Two divided by two is one, eight divided by two is four, and remember, that whole number two stays right there. So that is my answer for that question. The last question for today says, jackpot robs 684 and 8 tenths of a kilogram of gold. He stores it equally in four different hideouts. How much gold is kept at each hideout? This is what we are to figure. Now, boys and girls, remember when we have worked with this in the past, We've talked about these fractions in some different ways. 
one way that we talked about was really we can take care of our decimal first and then we can divide. So if I take care of my decimal first, I'm noticing here that my divisor is already a whole number, right? A whole number. Well, so there is technically a decimal, but it's already at the end up against the division box. So I'm not going to move my decimal at all in my divisor. It's not like I'm going to multiply this by a power of 10 to make it a whole number. I already have whole number four. So I'm not going to do any sideways movement here. I'm just going to rocket that decimal straight up into my quotient. And whatever I find my answer to be, I'm going to have some numbers, a decimal, and one more place value. Now, one of the strategies we found was that after you do that, we could go ahead and pretend like this is all a whole number. We can really have 6,848 being divided by 4, and then technically at the end, it's like I multiply it by 110 in order to put this place value here again, okay? And that has helped us as we've done in dividing with decimals. So really, boys and girls, we're going to think about four and how many groups of four can we get from 600, or excuse me, 6,848. So I'm going to start with saying 4,000. If I got 1,000 groups of four, that would be 2,848, right? Now that's good, but certainly I can do more. So now I'm going to take 700 groups because 7 times 4 is 28, and then I'll have two zeros. Now I have 48, okay? Now I know that I can get exactly 12 groups of 4 from 48. When I subtract that 48, I have no remainder. Now this is really important to remember that my answer up here, when I add these together, it is going to equal, I'm going to write it kind of sideways here, 1,712, right? 1,712. But now I have to remember that really I have to go back and multiply that answer by one-tenth, or we can say just give a decimal right here after that first decimal place value. So really my answer will be 171 and two-tenths. That will be the answer. Now, the answer here is grams because we're thinking about the gold and how much gold is in each of those four hideouts.